Hello, I'm Sam Green, AudioPropeller.com, and we're going to be taking a look at Loopback with Meet Loopback, the name of today's video. And this is a, a kind of specific to Main Stage 3. There's a couple new features. We are going to uh, take a look at them. So here we are in Main Stage, and I've got a pretty simple patch, and it's got the electric piano. Um, inside this concert and uh, there's not too much going on stripped everything out that I could um, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to first set up a few things to make working with uh, these tempo and position based plugins a little easier so I'm going to come over to layout and grab a couple text parameter text controls and pull them out onto my layout workspace. Uh, so then I'm going to map them at the concert level. So come up here and click on concert. And then I'm going to map them to the um, beat count. And then I'm going to map this other one to the uh, tap tempo, which will actually just show me the tempo. So now that we've got that set up, we are going to uh, do something that's gonna help us organize our concert and uh, make things a little more efficient. I'm going to create a set uh, with this patch in it. So I'm gonna say new set from selection and it's gonna give me this set and I'm gonna call it loop back. And at this loop back level, I am going to uh, create a couple objects which are actually just gonna be auxiliary, auxiliary channels with loop backs in them. So this is just like another level that you can create things at and set different settings at. So like you could uh, create these mappings to show the uh, beat count and the tap tempo at the concert level and they would they work throughout all your other uh, sections of your concert. You can create things that exist at the set level. So I'm going to create um, two auxiliary um, channel strips and they are going to have an input of best one and that one looks good to me and I'm going to create them at the set level that is correct and I am going to well I have both of them highlighted this is kind of a handy little thing I can um, get my loop back here and it creates two of them so that's cool I'm gonna go down here and name this one uh, LB1 and this one is going to call call it uh, we'll call it LB2, and I've got LB1 up here, so you can see you got your name up there, so it makes it a little easier to keep track of uh, what's going on. And then you can also hit this link, and I believe this will pop back and forth, yeah, between our two. So when you select the different ones here, you can see this up here is changing. So uh, not really specific to loop loopback, but handy little uh, tip there. So. Let's go ahead and route some things to our loopback. And this is one other thing we have to do. Uh, I changed this to be bus two, and we'll be sending audio on bus two to this loopback. So let's take a look at loopback one with our classic electric piano. Uh, so what you're gonna have to have set up is a bit of a send from your instruments to bus one and bus two. So um, typically they'll come in like this all the way down to silence so you'll want to alt click and that'll bring it up to uh, full so um, one setting change we want to make on loopback is monitoring we don't want to really hear what we're playing through loopback in the way I'm going to set it up there are other ways to do it but this is how we're going to so now when we play we don't see a bunch of meters up here lighting up. So now that we've got everything flowing through here, I'm going to create one more thing, a button that I'm going to map to a my controller here. I have a machine drum pad. I'm just going to quickly map that. And then I'm going to uh, assign this to, at the set level, important, to loopback one. You can see I didn't see those loopbacks, which is what clued me in that I was in the wrong spot. So I'm going to say loopback, uh, transport, and then record. So now for my loopback, I will be able to press this button here and 
activate loopback recording. So I will turn that off and bring my loop back up. And you can see it's running along here. So I'm going to stop it. I'm going to wipe out the loop that I just created with nothing in it. And we are going to take a look at the interface here. So you can see we've got a play button up here and a record button and a metronome and our output. So we're going to be interested in this play one and the metronome really right now. So when you start uh, loopback running with main stage, it's something you kind of don't have to think about very often with other, when you're doing other just, you know, playing keyboards or things like, uh, you know, singing or playing your guitar through it. But in the background, main stage is running a internal beat clock. And this controls some third-party plugins and also some built-in plugins in main stage like loopback, uh, playback, ultra beat. So plugins that need to have an awareness of uh, where they are in time and what the tempo is. Uh, so this beat clock gets that done. So we've got um, a, a tempo of 116 set up and so you can see that's displayed here as well and we've got 4-4, four, four, uh, that's our meter and we've got an unspecified length for our first loop. We can change that right now. We can change that to be a one bar or we can change it to go all the way up to 32 and we're going to leave it unspecified right now. And when I hit play again, this is going to start our beat count over. And we can turn on the metronome with this button or with this button here, or you can assign it also. So I've got this sync set up to snap to the bar. So it's not going to start recording until we roll around to the beginning of the measure. So let's see that happen here. I'm going to hit record. take the metronome off and you can see we're still recording so I can go ahead and overdub a little bit I could turn it off and I could just play over top I can also reverse And we can undo. And sometimes we can't undo. You never know when you're going to be able to undo. It's best to try and undo right after you've done something, of course. So we're going to stop it. Oh, one more thing. We can have it fade out over the number of seconds we specify. So we can do it quicker at two seconds. And so what happens after that is you end up with a um, length of two. So it's not like we had it set before where it was set to unspecified. So now I have it snapped to bar. I can say turn metronome back on. And it just is recording over this two bar length. So I didn't have to press stop. It kind of makes it a little easier to uh, to keep your hands on the piano if you don't have a foot controller it's easier to do all this stuff if you have a foot but right now I just got a couple a button up here in front of me um, to make things a little uh, simpler most people do have a some kind of little drum pad they can do this kind of thing with so those are the basic um, transport controls and those are all grouped when you go to map things under transport um, we've also got um, oh I wanted to show you one thing about the metronome uh, you may not know this but you go to preferences and uh, bring that back up. Metronome, you can send it to a different output and you can adjust the volume and you can also uh, tweak the metronome as well um, and make uh, the different, you know, have it make a different sound um, uh, and uh, have, it, have it, it can have more of a tonal. Um, I think you do that right here. Show metronome. And you can change the sound of it there if it irritates you and you know make it make it sound a little different so um, let's hide that so coming back to our original loopback we have these synchronization settings here and this is where things can get just a little bit confusing um, let's see first what setting the sync to off does and then we'll clear this whole thing out so now I hit clear and 
everything's gone. There's no beat markers. It looks like this thing just kind of bombed out, but it actually didn't. So um, what we're going to do is stop, and then we're also going to select this, set concert tempo after first take. So now this is kind of an interesting thing. I can, I can play a little phrase um, and, and set my loop and then set the whole concert tempo based on what I just played. So I'll try and do something like, like that, so we'll go. So it's kind of, takes a, a bit of practice to get exactly right, but you can see my tempo has been switched to 107. And um, it's, uh, main stage has done a pretty good time uh, job with getting that right. And actually, it's not main stage doing it. It's kind of up to you to set the loop properly. So um, that set the length again, and it set the tempo. And but we're still not in sync. So. Um, You can see that we just doesn't doesn't wait for the the downbeat of the measure to come around. You've got to have sync on to to have that to have that uh, wait for so and starts on the one there. So once you have sync on, you can set your snap to the beat, so kind of the quarter note or the loop. So that's the length here of my of my loop. And then we've got this play from setting here, which is an interesting setting. It lets your loop either play from the loop start every single time. So if you have a two bar loop, it will start from the beginning and snap up to the bar and it'll just start at the beginning every single time. The second option is to um, start from the relative position. And so that's relative to the uh, beat clock. So if you have a um, say four bar loop and your beat clock is at two or right before two and you hit play and it snaps to the bar it will start playing at the second bar of your loop so this lets you keep all of your loops in sync to each other if that makes sense if you have a longer loop that is four bars long and one that is two it'll let you always make sure that they come around and start together at the beginning of their loops so you don't have a staggering effect so um, let's take another look at that so to illustrate the concept of play from start versus play from relative position uh, we'll take a look at this uh, little drawing um, we've got our, our uh, main stage beat clock starting at one uh, which was triggered by this four bar loop one beginning. So you can see this is the beginning of loop one and it goes out for four bars and then at five it's gonna start looping again. So we've got loop two and it is set to uh, play from the start of the loop. And we started it playing somewhere in here and it synced up and started at uh, two. So it is, it's one is now going to uh, align with loop one's uh, two. So it is not lining up with one here. So it's going to go around, it's going to play the second half of that loop, and then it's going to loop around and play the beginning of that loop again on four, and then you're going to have kind of a staggered uh, repetition of these two loops, um, not lining up but overlapping. So loop three has been set to uh, play from a relative position, so if we were to have started it at the same point as L2 and it kicked off at uh, bar two, of the, the beat clock, then it is going to start also at its second um, half. So it's going to come back around and loop at uh, three and then proceed to play the rest of the loop. And then once we get around to five, it's going to play from the beginning at one and it's going to line up with uh, loop one. Now that's most of the features uh, in loopback. Um, you've got a couple others in here, kind of utilities. This is the little action menu here. You can export your audio you've created to use in another program, or you can uh, import your tape loop. Um, and one thing you may want to do is if you get something that's really cool in one of these, make sure you export it because these loopbacks are pretty volatile and you may lose something. Um, 
So you, we got a little taste of the monitoring earlier. We can turn it on or off or only have it active during record. We can um, have different actions, uh, make the loopback uh, plugin do different things when the uh, patcher set is selected. So if I were to pop into this, uh, this set, then it would it could start playing my loop if I had something set up or it could just start recording. So um, if you have a nice flow to your set and you want to keep things moving, then you can you can have everything set up to just make things happen like that. So uh, and then you can also have it so when you uh, press play up here that certain things happen inside the loopback that it'll do one of these actions. So let's turn that off and which actually has no effect if we have sync on so that's important too if you're trying to get that to work where it sets your tempo you have to have sync off and you have to have that option set concert tempo after first take selected so let's check out one other thing which I noticed um, and which I think hopefully you'll like is this group so this is really cool let's bring up our other loop back here and uh, kind of bring them up both at the same time so we can see what's going on so we've got a uh, group and we'll set this one to A and we'll set this to B, and then we will, um, let's just let this guy play, and then we'll come down, so we've got that little loop going there, and you can see it stopped the other one, stopped group A, so this is like a, a choke, it chokes the other one off, and then I can come back here and play, and it chokes the other one off, so that's pretty handy. And I can also set them to be both the same group, and they'll start playing together. So pretty handy. My, you know, the second loop down here is out of time, so uh, doesn't sound that great. But you get the idea of what this can do. Uh, you can have, you know, two loopers set up on group A, and then two loopers set up on group B. You could have maybe your drums going into to the first looper, and your melodics going into your second looper, and you can, you know, get get some cool loops going, and then you can pop over and start recording in your second set of loopers, and those first two will shut off and then you can cut back to the your first set of loops so you can once you build things up you can um, go back and forth and there's less uh, it makes things less complicated but because before you would have to stop your first set of loopers and stop start recording on your second set of loopers and it's just really too complicated so this makes it easier to have these loop back units really coordinate between each other and uh, make them a little more intelligent and make them practical for live performance. So um, I'm pretty excited about what these things can do. Uh, I'm going to be doing a couple more videos showing you how um, to set these up, multiple loopers with uh, multiple instruments, and how to, uh, you know, some, some looping techniques for live performance. Uh, and I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing some of these details of the new loop back in Main Stage 3. Uh, thanks for watching.